We've been telling you about the huge GOP problem over the last couple of weeks. That's Paul Ryan's Medicare plan. They're damned by the voters if they support it, and they're damned by conservative commentators if they don't. So we now have this fascinating split where the Republicans in the Senate are running away from the plan while the GOP presidential contenders are running toward it. Now let me show you why. Paul Ryan's budget plan would destroy Medicare as we know it by turning it into a voucher program that has no guaranteed benefits. Voters hate it. We've seen their outrage at town hall after town hall and in poll after poll. Seems like the whole country is screaming in unison, do not touch our Medicare. The Senate Republicans got the message loud and clear. They have pulled the chute. The Hill reports that when the Senate votes on Ryan's plan next week, GOP leader Mitch McConnell won't even bother pressuring other Republicans to vote for it. They are dropping this like a rock. But on the other hand, in order to win the primary, the presidential candidates have to appeal to the far right, which loves and demands this plan. And the far right is forcing all of the candidates to sign on to Ryan's proposal or face their wrath. Newt Gingrich learned this the hard way. He spent a week apologizing and groveling after he dared to critique Ryan's plan at all. Now, Mitt Romney's no dummy. He already has enough trouble with his right flank, so he immediately went along. He rushed forward to say he's on the, quote, same page as Ryan. Tim Pawlenty is bragging that his plan will have many similarities to Ryan's. But you might suspect that a guy like John Huntsman, who's been billed as the moderate in the race, might be bold enough to challenge the plan. Well, almost, for a little while. According to the Boston Globe, he told a crowd in New Hampshire there are parts of the Ryan plan that need to be considered. Only parts? Only considered? Well, before the rage of the cavemen set in, someone handed Huntsman the memo, and he turned that hesitation right around. How about Congressman Paul Ryan's budget? Uh, former Speaker Gingrich is such in trouble talking about that uh, this week. If you were in Congress, would you have voted for it? I would have voted for it. Including the Medicare provisions? In including the Medicare provisions. And there he goes. So today the National Review scolded him a little, asking whether he just flip-flopped on Ryan's plan. In other words, you better watch yourself. To the naked eye, this would appear to be asinine and unbelievably counterproductive for the Republicans. As their elected officials are running away from the Ryan plan, they're forcing their presidential contenders to fall on their own swords just to prove how extreme they are. But hey, if that's how you want to roll, have at it, Hoss. With me now is former Democratic Congressman from Florida, Alan Grayson. Congressman Grayson, great pleasure to have you here. Thank you. All right. Uh, Huntsman, I'm, you know, look, I'm hopelessly naive, right? I, you know, I go after these Republicans because I think they're bad for the country. Uh, I explain exactly why. I present my case, et cetera. But every once in a while, I still get a little hopeful. I see a guy like Huntsman, I think maybe he's a little moderate. And he goes and, of course, immediately craters to the right wing. A am I a fool for ever having hope in any Republican? I'm afraid so, Cenk. Uh, listen, <laughs> only 4% of all Americans ever vote in a Republican primary. That's 4%. The other 96% are the normal Americans. The 4% are people who must never get sick because they don't want to have Medicare. Now think about that. Every other industrialized country in the entire world not only provides health care for its seniors, but health care for everyone. And the Republican right wing is trying to tell us that somehow we can't afford health care for our seniors. We've got 40,000 Americans under the age of 65 who die every year because they can't afford to see a doctor when they're sick. And now they want to extend that to the most infirm, most victimized, sickest part of the population, our senior citizens, so that more will die. I honestly believe that if Rush Limbaugh and Glenn Beck announced one day that they were in favor of the black death, you'd see every Republican primary candidate for president go along with it. <laughs> you know, it, it depends. If Obama said, hey, I'd like to cure the black death, they'd be like, oh, I don't know. The black death sounds pretty good. So uh, now, look, I think they've done tremendous damage to themselves. The polls are 70 percent and higher. They're on your side, Congressman Grayson. They say, we don't want you to touch our Medicare. So what are they doing here? Do they have a plan? Is, you know, is Rush Limbaugh or Fox News, are they doing some sort of strategy that we can't understand? Or are they just plain stupid? They are tools. It's that simple. They're tools. You know, George Carlin said back in 2005, they've made us ignorant, 
these people who own the country. They've made us ignorant and they've made us poor. And now the next thing they want to do is to take away our Medicare and our Social Security. He said that in 2005. And it's taken six years to make it obvious that that's true. And God bless them. These Republicans like Ryan, you know, they may be cruel, they may be heartless, but at least they're honest. They've told us exactly what they want to do with the power that they've accumulated. They want to take away Social Security and Medicare from our senior citizens. You know, I, I think you nailed it. I think what it is is corporations that have you know, run amok. It's out of control greed, whether it's the banks with all the risks that they're taking, uh, it's going to crash our economy again, whether it's the oil companies at the height of being the most profitable companies in the world, they still want to take billions in subsidies for the American taxpayer, and whether it's these guys trying to cut your Medicare so they can cut taxes for the rich. I think they got the note from the, uh, you know, the richest people in the country, from the corporations, who said, hit the gas pedal. We don't give a damn. We're going to outraise these guys. We're going to get more money. And this is the time to put them away. Just tell them what you're going to do. It doesn't matter. We're just going to outspend them in, during the elections. I, I think that's what's happening. Now, the problem is they are going to outspend the Democrats in the elections. So how do you deal with that problem? Well, it's apparent now that what these owners want is nothing from the rest of us except for cheap labor. And that makes the senior citizens particularly vulnerable to their plans because the senior citizens don't work. So from the perspective of the owners of this country, they're useless. Their time in the economy is over and therefore they serve no purpose. But senior citizens still do vote. And they voted in huge numbers in the last election because the Republicans lied to them and they told them that the Democrats wanted to take away their Medicare. Now they see that the Democrats are the only ones protecting their Medicare and the Republicans are out to destroy it. There's a reason why we call Medicare an entitlement. It's because you're entitled to it. It's not Medicare anymore if you're not entitled to it anymore. They want to take away the privilege of Medicare. They want to take away the right to Medicare and replace it with a piece of paper they know will not be enough to cost the cover of care. And that's how malevolent they really are. So I will say to senior citizens of this country, now you see the truth. You see their true colors. And the only thing you can do about it is turn out and vote for the only people in this country who are actually trying to protect you and your interests, the Democratic Party. All right. Former Democratic Congressman from Florida, Alan Grayson, very clear as always. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jen.